All right, well, it is 103, so I'm going to begin as more people continue to come into the webinar. But welcome, everybody. Well, let me turn on my camera, too. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Eric Menes. I am the um, manager of the private sector innovation here at Canary. We are recording this webinar, and it will be available on YouTube shortly after the webinar concludes. The PowerPoint slides to today's webinar were sent ahead of time, so if you have them in your email, please feel free to follow along. I did get a couple emails saying that one of the PDFs I sent along was showing zero bytes, so I will resend that PDF after the webinar concludes. If you'd like to ask a question during the presentation, please use the Q&A option uh, down at the bottom panel of Zoom. We have a couple spots during the presentation where we will address questions, so feel free to write questions in the QA panel at any time, and we'll get to them when we get to those periods. I'm also pleased to have both Eric and Salem joining me today from Parabellix, as well as quite a few of our DARE team members. So welcome everybody. And I'd like to pass this off to Annie Jalakur to introduce, uh, do our French introduction. Annie. Bonjour à tous, bienvenue à notre webinaire d'aujourd'hui. Euh, simplement pour vous aviser que la présentation d'aujourd'hui est enregistrée et que euh, la vidéo YouTube va être disponible peu de temps après la présentation. Également, vous devriez avoir reçu une copie euh, des diapositives par courriel. Donc, si vous voulez suivre avec votre propre copie, vous êtes les bienvenus de le faire. Euh, également, on mentionne euh, que c'est possible qu'il y ait un des documents là, qui ne fonctionne pas. Donc, euh, il y a une nouvelle copie qui va vous être envoyée suite à la présentation. Si vous avez des questions durant la présentation, euh, simplement utilisez la fonction Q&A au bas de votre écran dans votre menu Zoom. Euh, il va y avoir des moments là, durant la présentation pour répondre à vos questions. Donc, euh, je repasse la parole à Eric. Thank you very much, Annie. Before we get into the webinar presentation today, I'm going to quickly just go through our agenda. So we've just went through the welcome portion of the webinar. I have a couple quick updates and news pieces to share from the DARE program, as does Tom. And then immediately after that, we'll be getting into the webinar, Automated Static and Dynamic Application Security Testing, which is our new booster pack, uh, which was developed by Parabellix Corporation. Following that, we'll have time for questions and closing. So a couple updates and pieces of news uh, from the DARE program. We do have two new booster packs that are still in development and will be coming in the coming months. Those are automated data pipeline for data analytics using AI by Intellius AI and cloud-based platform for geospatial intelligence with machine learning by Ecosystems Informatics Inc. Expect to see those in the next coming months. We also do have another webinar coming up next week. We are sitting down with Opta or RunX Labs, the developer of Opta, to go over an open source project that helps create secure SO2, uh, SOC2 and PCI compliant cloud infrastructure with ease. So be sure to watch your email for an invitation to that webinar next week. And before we hand this off to Eric and Salem, I will pass this to Tom shortly to speak on both updates to DARE migrations and the Morpheus upgrade. Tom? Thank you very much, Eric. Welcome, everybody. Um, so just a couple of quick items. I don't want to take too much time because uh, uh, there's some really interesting and cool stuff that uh, our friends from Parabellix Corp are going to share. Um, many of you have uh, seen an email on uh, the migrations that we're doing to a subtenant model uh, in the DARE cloud. And um, for those of you that have already gone through the migration process, thank you for your uh, attention on that and uh, hope everything's running smooth. If not, you know how to reach us in Slack or email. And uh, for those that are yet to be migrated, we're just past the, the halfway point and gaining momentum now. So uh, if you did get an email recently, be sure to book a, a meeting with the support team and uh, we'll help you through the migration. For those that can't, uh, we'll do the migration for you and you can uh, do the verification of the replicated instances uh, when time permits for you. Uh, so look for that and please, please book an appointment if, if you want some help with the migration. The other thing I wanted to mention was uh, there is a Morpheus upgrade uh, update that's coming out very soon. It's currently in our QA in our lab environment and looking 
uh, pretty strong. It's got some bug fixes and security patches that obviously we want to get into our production environment as quickly as possible, along with uh, a new feature that uh, will make it a lot more visible, easy to see these great booster packs that uh, have been built by our, our builders like Parabellix Corporation and something called a, a service catalog. So um, look for some updates and news soon uh, when we're ready to deploy that to our production environment. So back to you, Eric. Thank you so much, Tom. Now, moving on, we are going into uh, the new DARE booster pack today, automated static and dynamic application security testing, which was developed by Parabellix. So I'd uh, like to welcome both Eric and Salem from Parabellix to introduce their booster pack. Eric and Salem, please take it away when you're ready. Thanks, thanks for having us. Um, I'm just gonna share here uh, briefly and um, See if I can make this work properly. All right, there we are. Can we see us? See us all right? Yep, looks fantastic on my end. Perfect, great. So, uh, just want to introduce ourselves. Um, uh, I'm uh, Eric Matthews, the uh, CTO and, and Director of Services at, at Parabellix Corporation. Uh, Sal. Hi, I'm Salem. I'm the uh, main architect of the Argus solution. So I'll be talking more about the details behind it. And Eric will talk about the high level stuff as we go through our presentation. Back to you, Eric. Thanks. So uh, obviously Parabellix is a cybersecurity company. Um, our specialty is in cloud and application security, although we do work uh, across the, the cybersecurity space in, in both the uh, US and Canadian markets. Um, we've worked with the businesses around different verticals, different sizes, you know, ranging from major major Canadian banks to, uh, to some small startups. Um, obviously through the, the DARE program, I think there's a, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, young companies that can benefit from this. Um, we really have uh, started to focus our efforts on uh, application security and application development and how to build application security into that process. So that's really been uh, what we identified as a key piece of cybersecurity that was really important in the industry and something that I, I think a lot of small companies find uh, a little bit of a daunting task to, to dive into. Um, so obviously, you know, this is a critical piece to any software development, especially software that's going to be exposed uh, to the web or mobile apps, um, uh, things that are in the hands of a customer or exposed directly to the general public. They're obviously going to be a target of attacks. They're, they're going to be a, a, a major uh, source of risk for your business. Um, and, you know, I think that's underscored really well by, you know, some of the things you see in the in the media, the, the, the high profile hacks uh, that happen. And the majority of those that we see today are happening through the exposed applications with organizations that they're publishing, whether, you know, you see LinkedIn or Ashley Madison or any of those well publicized ones that have, have happened. But the challenge is that uh, companies have constraints and resources and knowledge and time and money to implement good security principles, good security practices when they're building software. So uh, a lot of times they try to do a security assessment at the end of uh, a development cycle or during a release or in the middle of a production run. And that's, you know, it's a valuable activity. It's not something you shouldn't do. And we do that with our customers as well. But, but more important, I think, is to really build that into the development process. Um, but what we see is the commercial tools that are out there that they're generally either expensive or, or they're free tools that are you know, difficult to implement and, and hard to, to, to interpret, um, especially with, uh, with uh, you know, deciding how to pull those together and get those integrated. So what we decided to do and something we've done with some of our customers on a commercial basis is, is to build a package of application security testing tools, incorporate it together into a single piece and then provide a sim simple uh, a means of implementing that and, and understanding the results. So focusing on, uh, for the DARE booster pack, focusing on uh, 
the fundamentals of, of best practice, but still using uh, that open source uh, software so we don't have a burden of heavy licensing charges and things for, 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 for startups. Um, we've you know, found some cloud native and open source CICD integration uh, tools that can do CICD integration um, so that we can work with the existing CICD pipelines that the companies uh, have built or are building and help them integrate those tools into that pipeline. And beyond that, uh, providing the, the training or the, or the documentation to be able to integrate that quickly is, is really the goal. Salem, do you wanna talk about what we built here? Sure. So we created a product called Argus and it's an AST application security testing platform developed on Kubernetes. So we try to keep ourselves cloud native and we were able to integrate into the DIR infrastructure, which is running on AWS and Azure. And by using Kubernetes, what we uh, enable customers to do is if they can't use the DARE environment for some reasons, because it's Kubernetes, they could spin up on their own cluster and have the same exact experience as a DARE customer. And what we did is we add in our um, SAST and DAS tooling and ACI CD pipeline so we can automate some of the uh, manual processes that were involved in SAS and DAS scanning. And again, because we're putting this through the DARE environment, we've also included two sample solutions, one for going through the SAS and one going through the DAS. Back to you, Eric. Sure. So fundamentally, you know, what is an application security testing framework? What is it? What does it do? What's its goal? Um, is a question that, you know, customers ask us sometimes. Um, some developers often know what they are, but, you know, what do we what do we build? What are the what are the pieces of that? Is kind of the question. So, uh, ultimately, uh, what our goal here is to help organizations build these applications according to best practices. Now, OWASP, uh, the uh, Open uh, Web Application, um, uh, shoot, <laughs> uh, I forgot I forgot the acronym, but uh, the OWASP organization it helps build out industry standard uh, uh, web application uh, recommendations, frameworks, policies, and and um, and best practices. They have a lot of resources. If it's something that you're interested in, it's, I definitely would look up the OWASP. They also have a, a top ten list that's well referenced and and, and understood by the industry um, that outlines the, the top ten most frequent uh, vulnerabilities in web uh, and and other applications today. But um, so right now. Now, I mean, companies are integrating um, tooling that helps them do this into their pipelines. The tooling that we have uh, is a, the, number one, a static application security testing, uh, and another is a dynamic application security testing. And we'll go over the difference of those in just a minute. Um, so ultimately what they're doing is taking applications while they're being developed, either in, in phases of, of, of development like uh, unit testing, or as you begin to build out the application to a more co uh, cohesive unit that's, that's, all, that's functional, these tools can, can execute on, the, on either the whole application or pieces of it. Um, so diving into what these are, um, uh, static application security testing is is obviously a, a, a full view of the code. It's a, it's where we take the code, and we we scan it in a static nature. Um, so, uh, Salem, why don't you go into how we chose Sonar Cube and and how that's working with our uh, our clients? Sure. So one of the things we try to avoid is getting a niche technology that nobody's heard of and trying to put it into our uh, clients and uh, the community. This would create a lot of friction and a lot of people won't be able to know how to staff this. So we went with Sonar Cube because it was known across the industry. A lot of banks and a lot of Toronto businesses were already using Sonar Cube. So we adopted that. The other nice thing about Sonar Cube is it is open source. So we didn't have to worry about that licensing issue. And some of the complaints I've heard was that 30 day uh, licensing, not a lot of companies can commit to the 30 day and they didn't want to get into uh, talking to the sales guys, trying to extend that 30 day. And by going down the Sonar Cube route, this removed that 30 day uh, limitation, but it also gave you access to a community. Um, Sonar Cube is heavily open source and there's a community following on there. So there's a lot of great information coming from that community. And this is always an evolving product. Sonar Cube has just recently added Terraform and CloudFormation. So now we're getting the um, infrastructure's code scanning uh, being performed and they're always iterating. And uh, because of this openness, you can see what they're doing. And if you want to contribute to the project, you can freely do that. And what we chose Sonar Cube additionally for was the rich uh, information you get from it, the dashboards. And one of the key thing was the education material. 
when we talk to some groups, they kind of know what SQL injections or cross side scriptings are, but they sometimes don't know how to write mitigation tools or uh, processes to prevent this from happening. And by using Sonar Cube, you do get the information from that. And we found that was a critical component of adopting Sonar Cube into our processes. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, Sonar Cube is great because it provides both security recommendations as well as things like code quality evaluations, which, which can be really helpful. Right. And so this is an example of what you'll see if you're using the booster pack that comes with our solution. Um, so we are using an application called a Dam Vulnerable Web Application, and it's a purposely broken product that's used to help train uh, developers to see what an SQL injection is, how it's actually being performed by an attacker, and how to write mitigation and blocking steps and to prevent that. So what we're looking at right now is one of the scans that's been completed. So this is the initial scan. So on the left-hand side, you'll see there's a quality gate status and this passed. If you were to run this again, the quality gate will trigger to a fail because you do have so many vulnerabilities here that it's not safe to pass into production. And when you first take a look at this, you're, you're overwhelmed because you got 1.6K bugs and a lot of these numbers. And so what I tell companies to do when they first see this is focus on the security hotspots. Hot and this is more in line with what you see with the OWASP recommendation. So what we try to do is always go off of OWASP because if, if you're kind of trying to figure out, okay, I have this vulnerability, not really sure, you could always go to the OWASP uh, website and they will have in-depth uh, analysis of what this vulnerability is and a lot of other steps you can take to mitigate it. And this way you can uh, increase your knowledge of all these security vulnerabilities that are coming out. Um, and if we go to the next slide, we can focus specifically on a specific hotspot. So on the left-hand side, what Sonarchy provides us is the categories of vulnerabilities. So one of the categories is the SQL injection. And this is what we commonly see when we do web penetration testing is some websites that our clients have might have some SQL injections. And then when we write the remediation, some of them are like, it's nice that we kind of know what it is, but could you provide us some other uh, additional tools that can help us find these so we don't have to wait to the end of the process contact the security firm and then have them come in. So it's part of this shift left methodology that Sonar Cubes helps you with. So when we look at the right side, we can immediately see, okay, this is an SQL injection and it's got a high criticality. But when you look down at around section three, you actually see the source code. So you can actually see the line that is being flagged to cause that vulnerability. Now, sometimes with a lot of these tools, they do have a sense to gain some false positives. So with Sonar Cube, you can uh, look at the line and you can determine, is this a false positive or a real positive? So if it's a real positive, you can sign this to a developer and they can uh, remediate it. Now, the, the nice part about Sonar Cube is that section number four on the bottom. If you do pass this to the developer and they kind of know what it is, but they still need a little bit more help on to writing the remediation step, if they log into the Sonar Cube, a dashboard and they go to the screen on the bottom where it says section four you can actually read information about what that vulnerability is and why it's critical and then you can now follow the uh, advice that's coming from sonar cube to write the mitigation step to safeguard your application from a sql injection like we see here all right next slide please so DAST, Fundamentally Dynamic Application Security Testing, is um, a way of testing an application as it's running. You're looking at the dynamic security of the application. So rather than taking a look at the code, we're submitting uh, queries to the application. We're going through input validation uh, testing and really going through the code as it's deployed. Um, some of the advantages here is that for uh, in many cases, you don't always have all the source code. For example, you may be employing a, a binary library or you're wondering how the framework framework is handling a certain type of, of, of edge case. So the dynamic application security testing is a different approach that takes the application as it's running in a, say, a UAT environment where it's relatively uh, closer to, to functional, and then runs that through a series of tests that, that help identify similar issues. Um, and often it'll find the same things, um, but you just get a slightly different view of it. So it's a good idea to run some of each. Um, Salam, do you want to talk about uh, the solution we chose? Yeah. 
So uh, we chose that proxy because it is sponsored by the OWASP group. So again, keeping that theme consistent um, by using that proxy, it's also an open source product and the community there is very engaging and they're always trying to improve uh, that proxy. When we first started using that proxy, didn't have a lot of CI integration and it was a little harder to use, but the group the, the community uh, listened to a lot of the advice that was coming from us saying, it would be great if you could add this or you can add that. And they've been very, um, they've been very willing to take into a lot of these changes and incorporate it. And now that uh, Zap Proxy has moved from something that was a manual uh, tooling to more automated. And in a couple of months, it will be more tightly ingrained into uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment pipelines. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. So uh, this is a report that you would get when you run uh, Zap Proxy in our pipeline. And although it looks a little bit primitive at the moment, this is because of uh, some of the styling that's been removed. But what we can see here is the high level of the vulnerabilities in the damn vulnerable web applications. So what we did is we deployed the application to a web container and that's running. Uh, the nice guys at DARE have actually spun up a uh, target practice website for the DARE community to try out. Um, so you can practice uh, using that proxy against uh, the Dan Bromba web application just to get a little understanding of how that proxy works. And then you can tailor it to your website so you can start performing best analysis on your website. So with this report, what you can do is focus down on the bottom part where you have the names of the vulnerability. So if we want to take a look at example for uh, directory browsing, uh, Eric, next slide, please. What Zap Proxy will do is show you a report of the directory browsing and it'll list the URLs where they've detected the directory browsing of vulnerability. And one of the nice solutions about Zap Proxy, again, is the educational uh, approach that it takes. So we see here that we have a directory browsing vulnerability, and then there's actually a solution that we can read. And the solution was. As, um, right now it's just disable browsing. And then what you can do is if you're not familiar with how to disable browsing, there's references that you can go to. So the references might be to the Apache website where they give you the declaration you put in your HTTP conf to disable that or any ancillary information that can provide to help educate you to understand, okay, this is what the vulnerability is and these are the fixes I can put in. Okay, next slide, please. So fundamentally what we built here was um, to take these tools that you can use and download yourself, put them into a single package with a simplified instruction set so that they're ready, functional, and uh, able to in integrate immediately. Um, this package is available in the uh, DARE software catalog and, and operates within the, um, within the DARE environment. Um, and uh, there's also sample solutions. Uh, there's a target practice website and um, uh, detailed documentation on implementing that in a <coughs> basic uh, Jenkins configuration uh, like uh, Dare has uh, uh, generally employed, so you can see it uh, here in the um, in the in the uh, uh, current offerings um, for that uh, blueprint. Um, Salem, do you want to run through what the implementation looks like through Jenkins? Sure. So, um, coming before this, uh, Zap Proxy and Sonar Cube is pretty much a manual process. The developer would have to do something on their computer, run a bunch of code, uh, execute the executable, get the scans, and then they would have to send the scans to uh, everybody else to see. And we felt that anytime there was a manual process within a security realm, it always got discouraged because people are going, this is just an added task that we don't want, and so we're going to avoid it. So what we do is what we did was we brought in Jenkins to help automate that process. So if you're familiar with Jenkins, it's a CI CD tool that goes in. And if you configure Git uh, to send a webhook to Jenkins, you can kind of automate the process. So we kind of made the tooling there to help automate the DAS, the DAS and SAS scanning for you. Um, the concepts behind Jenkins is transferable to other CI CD uh, technologies like Azure Pipelines, uh, Bamboo, uh, CI, and uh, so forth. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. 
So this is an example of one of the SAS configurations. So SAS is basically a very easy tool to help integrate into your pipeline because it essentially does three things. The first one, it will clone the repository. And in our case here, the second step is to download the sonar scanner executable. And then the third step is to run the scanner. And when you run the scanner, it checks the source files. It'll create a artifact and I'll push the artifact to the sonar cube server. And that's what we originally saw in the last two screens above was it now put of that. Now, if we go to the next slide, DAST is a little bit more complicated and it, and a lot of companies always kind of struggle with the, the DAST uh, setup. And it's because of the way DAST works is a multi setup uh, stages that you have to do. So what we did is we took our, our zap proxy set up and then we made it into a Jenkins file, uh, which we can see in the next slide. But essentially what you do with Jenkins is you call your Git repository and it looks for a Jenkins file. And the Jenkins file is basically a recipe of what, do, what steps do I have to run to execute this pipeline? So here we can see um, a pipeline definition to run the DAS scanner. And then we have our stages and within each stage is a step. So the first step is to start the zap proxy and then to initialize it. And then usually in this process here with this Jenkins file, you want to run your user acceptance testing. And in our case here, we use Selenium. And what this does is Selenium is routed through zap proxy. So it's listening to the headers to see what the HDB headers are and the source code to see if there's any vulnerability. And this helps in the initial seeding of Zap Proxy. When that part is done, then the Zap Proxy will do its spidering to understand all of the website it could possibly do, and then it'll launch the attack. After the attack is done, then it creates a artifact, and that artifact is the report that we saw earlier in the slide. Okay. So, um... We are available for support. Obviously, we're going to be um, making sure that these are uh, on the DARE um, portal. Um, DARE can help with uh, issues with getting access to the packages. Um, we'll be on Slack as part of our support agreement. Um, uh, and that can help uh, with this basic deployment, um, getting it up and running and that kind of thing. Um, I also wanted to mention, we use this package plus some other things as part of a commercial managed service. And this is something that we offer to industry uh, in general. Um, this is a little bit more things. It's, it's, it's number one, it's this package with the, uh, with the security tools. Um, it's also uh, number two, maintaining the solution. Number three, um, we have consultants um, uh, who will work and prioritize issues uh, essentially have periodic meetings with the team to, to, to go over and discuss those vulnerabilities. Um, and it includes some other things like container security, um, uh, web application firewall and DDoS prevention, and, and uh, cloud security posture management if, if applicable to your environment. Um, so this is just something uh, what we hear from some companies. I think startups maybe not in this position a lot, but when we've talked about offering this SAST and DAST package and then and then giving it to organizations as part of our consulting practice. Some have come back and said, listen, we don't have time to have a security staff on board. We don't have the expertise. We don't have the knowledge. So we do have this managed service as a as an additional thing beyond what what we have within DARE here. So totally willing to work with you guys to support that uh, what we have here. And that's uh, then you know you'll have access to those reports. Um, if you feel like you need more support or want a more complete solution, then you know you can you can talk to us about that. Um, but uh, you know either way, I think security is a huge deal in the application security space. It's something that we strongly recommend organizations lean toward and really dive into because right now, you know when I talk about this with with industry, um, it is really the new perimeter when you know when we look at IT from from 15 years ago it was a firewall it was email filtering and you know maybe a website but um, when you look at organizations today if you if you have a startup if somebody funds your startup more than likely you're not going to have a data center you're not going to have a, a LAN of any major significance with servers on it you're not going to be running on-premise exchange or active directory so what is a modern organization other than its employees its cloud environment and its applications. Um, so securing those applications becomes really core to the modern identity of a startup and a, and, a, and a business in general. So something to focus on, something to think about, and hopefully these are some tools that can get you started to go that direction. So I uh, just wanted to say thanks. Um, 
got our contact information here. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, Eric from uh, DARE, uh, I'll open it back up to you if uh, uh, we wanna take some questions or, or have any other further discussion. Fantastic, thank you so much to both of you for, uh, like I know we've been super excited about this booster pack and um, having this available to the community, as you stated, the importance of cybersecurity in the modern age when you're running a startup is almost of utmost, almost importance, uh, is of utmost importance, not only your product, but securing your product. So anyone yeah. who has any questions for both Salem and Eric, please feel free to use the QA panel down at the bottom. Meanwhile, I'm going to steal the spotlight for a sec. Go back to my screen share as these questions come in. So feel free to ask any questions that are both booster pack related as well as cybersecurity related, as these are our two experts here who can give you some advice on that. While we wait for questions to come in, a quick word about becoming a booster pack builder. If you would like to be sitting in the seats that Salem and Eric are sitting in currently, uh, we are currently looking for booster pack builders across a variety of different emerging technologies that you can find currently on our website, uh, which is canary.ch slash cloud. You can navigate to the Booster Pack Builder page from there. Booster Pack Builders are, um, are given multiple perks, one of them being $50,000 Canadian, as well as the exposure and recognition of what they offer the community, as well as their business and connections to new financial partners and resources. You can apply today by submitting an EOI on the Canary website. Again, canary.ch slash cloud. You'll be able to navigate to the Booster Pack Builder page from there and our Booster Pack catalog, which does have the Parabellix Booster Pack available right now if you would like to check that out and begin playing with it right away. Not seeing a question come in yet, but Tom, I saw you on mute. Do you have a question for uh, Salem and uh, Eric here? Yeah, I don't have a question right now, but I thought I'd jump in while somebody uh, uh, that's uh, on the webinar today is thinking of a, a great question for our friends at Parabellix. Um, I just wanted to say uh, two things. Um, one, I wanted to sincerely thank Eric and Salem for their contribution to the DARE community. Uh, this one uh, we've been looking forward to for some time because we do believe that um, that, as you mentioned, guys, the shifting to the left uh, is so, so important for startups today. And, and you know, it, there's a, a good number of you that are on the webinar today that are obviously conscientious of this and good for you. I uh, strongly encourage you to download and, and uh, deploy this booster pack in Air Cloud. I've done it myself as part of the... Uh, um, review and approval before going live with it. And I can tell you that I was so impressed with the way the package was put together. Um, it's very simple, easy to deploy and understand. And the biggest bonus, I think, if I was uh, you as a, an entrepreneur or an SME, is it's going to be so, so simple once you've deployed the booster pack to just say, okay, now I want to I want to try this uh, static analysis test against my application repo. It's just a matter of repointing from that um, cloned image of the uh, uh, darn vulnerable web application repo to your own application repo. Restart that Jenkins uh, CICD and it's scanning your application and telling you what's wrong with your application and where, what security holes you have. So highly recommend that. On the flip side, on the dynamic analysis and testing, uh, what, what uh, Salem and Eric didn't mention is they leveraged um, a tool that some of you might already be familiar with, uh, Selenium, to automate uh, functional testing of a web application or service. So if you have a web interface to your application or service that you're building today, um, they've written the Selenium script to work against that uh, DVMA uh, sample application, but you can do some learning on your own. It's pretty straightforward to set up that Selenium plugin in your browser and point it to your application, hit the record button and start doing what a, a typical user would do. And you can build out these different 
use cases or test scenarios, and then you can play them back, automate them while the Zap proxy is, is looking at the HTTP traffic back and forth and giving you a, a fantastic report on what your vulnerabilities are. So right out of the gate, you've got everything you need to start the process of checking your application service for security. So please, please take a look at it. These guys are being extremely generous with their uh, development and sharing of this booster pack and the free open source tools. So why not take advantage of it? And, and while we have them uh, supporting the booster pack, uh, they're there for your technical questions as well. So thank you, Eric and Salim. And I'll throw it back to you, Eric, in case there's some questions coming. All right, thank you very much for that, Tom. As Tom said, this is really a great booster pack to check out that is applicable to any business out there that is operating on the web, which is essentially everybody. I am seeing no questions right now in the Q&A panel. So while we wait for some more of those come in, I will give a quick, um, a quick shout out to the webinar we do have coming next week uh, as questions will come in. So we do have one, another webinar coming up next week uh, involving Okta and how you can add value to your business and protect yourself. Again, we're big on cybersecurity here at Canary and we are definitely looking uh, to, ha to offer as much advice and information as we can on that. So uh, protecting your business and adopting cloud security best practices early on, that would be presented by Sachin Agarwal from Big Bit Bus, who is a booster pack builder as well. Previously did a booster pack uh, that was released last year. And then Anchor Daya from RunX Labs will also be there as he, RunX Labs, is the developer behind Opta. So that's next week at 1 p.m. So if there are so, any left. So did, if, we, if we haven't got any questions, I'll just take a minute and address a couple of, couple of things that we've seen in the industry, just, just for some background, and maybe it'll be interesting for, for the viewers. Um, you know, one of the reasons we started going down this road of, of really getting into SAST and DAS testing, obviously it's something the industry has been doing for a while, but, you know, we work with a lot of organizations that, uh, that have either regulatory requirements, um, they have partner requirements, or they're just uh, performing best practices. But often what happens is they build the application subject to tight deadlines and budgets, and then they get to the end and say, oh, right, we need to do security. So they call us up and we do a, a web application pen test, um, which is a good activity to do, especially if you've already finished the application testing. And it's, it's always a, a, you know, a good practice. But what we find is organizations are in this position of, okay, we need to launch next week. Let's do the pen test now. We find a lot of problems. We uh, we realize that, and then they have to go back and essentially cancel their launch, go back and re-architect certain parts of their solution, and then come back later with a new launch date with new budget requirements. Um, and that's a real challenge for organizations because it's 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 unfortunately common to get to that endpoint, have this deadline, and then realize, uh, you know, at, at, at essentially the ninth hour, uh, you know, we're, or 11th hour, I guess is the phrase, um, that we're, we're here and we're, um, we're ready to launch. We've told customers we're launching and we have this massive security bug and we have to go back. So the shift left concept that we've talked about, this is the really the, the best way to number one, make sure that you don't have those security um, uh, issues affecting your deadlines and launch dates. Um, number two, to really uh, understand understand the security better as you go through the build application build and, and development process. And number three, to essentially save money and time by not having to go and re-architect things if you find issues in the end. Um, it's, and, and, and it's not a failing of developers to have security issues. You know, bugs happen. I don't think anybody's ever written software with no bugs security issues are just a different type of bug. Sometimes they're even hidden because you don't see them in your functional or your QA testing in a lot of cases. So this is just adding another piece to your functional tests, to your unit tests, and it can really help prevent those issues as you move forward. So it's, I think it's super important to, to build this as early as possible in the process. I think I saw a question come in. Yes, we do have one came in. Um, they Currently your booster pack is, bond, is using two open source projects, a proxy and sonar cube. Can you comment on how active those projects currently are? Well, they're very active. Uh, as we known uh, around Christmas time, we had that issue with log4j that came out and everybody was going crazy uh, trying to figure out, do we have to remediate it or anything that was going on? And what happened was the DAS group quickly, the Zap proxy group quickly identified, oh yeah, we are using, uh, the log4j and they quickly remediate it, which was very interesting because 
it only came out a couple of days, uh, uh, the disclosure, but the Zap proxy guys were already on it going, okay, we're BDA, this is what the issues they are, and this is how we can address this to safeguard that this application is uh, protected with law against Block 4 j And the same thing with SonarCube, this, this community is actively finding vulnerabilities and going, okay, we need to patch this up. So they're quickly patching it. And even though they're patching it, what they're also doing is looking for ways to innovate. So these two packages are heavily being innovated innovated at the moment. Um, so I touched upon the, the Zap proxy, uh, not originally having the continuous integration uh, solution, but now if you go take a look at the Git history, you can see that in the GitHub repo, that there, there's an active uh, discussion going on. Hey, how do we integrate this? What is the integration gonna look like? And they're talking about, oh, we need a better UI and this is how we can do the UI. And there's a lot of conferences going on now that uh, Zap Proxy is uh, being talked to, uh, being talked about, and people are bringing ideals to them. And everybody's just bringing these ideas going, mm, that's very interesting, never thought about that. So right now it's a very hot, uh, these two technologies are very hot in terms of the number of uh, people that are contributing to them. And people really want to um, add their ideals to it. They think, we really think you should add infrastructure as code scanning, boom. The community start to look at it and now they integrate it in so these are very vibrant communities at the moment these are the two that i see at the at the top right now and the fact that it's free is just really wow i get this for free i i saw another question come in so i might jump on that one um sure, any, any guidance on what to watch out for running dast so we don't trigger public cloud policy um things like denial of service attacks um what in general, we find is that public cloud environments offer a uh, uh, an exemption for uh, this type of penetration testing. Now, you obviously want to be aware, or scanning, as you call it, but you obviously want to be aware of um, areas where you can get stuck in infinite loops. For example, sites that if you if you have any crawling um, uh, engines, which I don't think we're doing with Selenium here, but but some of the crawling engines involved in DAS testing that do exist will just follow links blindly. And if you have any loops in your links, for example, things that recursively uh, uh, can, can loop on themselves, that can be a challenge because you can end up making requests kind of endlessly. Um, but in general, with public cloud, you're able to do basic DAS testing within their uh, guidelines without having to ask permission. So that's been something that's it's good. When the cloud first came out, uh, you know, 10 plus years ago, they were requiring you to submit a ticket. Every time you did that, it wasn't very practical because they were improving them all anyway. So, um, you know, that's where we're at today. Um, you obviously want to keep an eye on it. If it starts running away, you know, you can you can kill it. But uh, we don't see that too much with the, with the solutions we're doing because the DAS testing is a semi-manual process. We're building some Selenium scripts that have to be trained to, to work with your application. So the, the crawling portion is a little bit manual and that's really the best way to do it anyway those those DAS packages like even the commercial ones with crawling engines are often kind of, it's kind of risky to run those unattended so you just have to be aware of that um, and that's a great point you brought up so our recommendation for DAS is to run it towards your staging environment and not your production in the past when we have done it towards production it would knock your server offline and you don't really want to have an e-commerce site and you accidentally knock off your e-commerce site because you ran a dash. So we always recommend, please do this either in a dev or a staging environment where, oopsie, I blew up my server. Okay, I'll just respin it. Yeah, it does submit queries repetitively. So it's something to be aware of. Um, in a lot of applications, you find you maybe you have some load uh, when you do a database query or something like that. So um, repetitively, for example, issuing an update to a database can cause it to start to, to time out database connections and things. So that's something to be aware of. Um, you know, obviously that's just the nature of, of the application because in order to do testing, it has to submit a few hundred requests to any active field. If that field has a one second um, uh, uh, time to, to execute, then uh, you submit 300 of them, you're obviously starting to run into minutes of lag uh, and that will make it non-responsive for users. So, so just worth being careful if production environments. That sounds great. Thank you again for the detailed answer. We do have a quick comment, not a question, from someone named Initial TB uh, about how interesting the booster pack is. And they're going to be looking to do it further. They just don't have the technical knowledge to ask any questions, but it will be brought up to the development team. While we wait for a couple of questions, I do have a quick question for you uh, regarding if I am an entrepreneur that just finished using the new Parabellix booster pack and I want to take my cybersecurity a little bit further, what would be the next steps I'd be looking to do after completing 
after successfully using this booster pack? Am I reaching out to Parabolics directly? What kind of services should I be looking at? So first step is obviously to get a handle on your application security environment. Um, now, for a lot of organizations that can be kind of daunting, I know that the the staffing, the time involved is a challenge. Uh, the, the, you know, the knowledge base um, is a challenge. So um, we can help with that if there are challenges in that area in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a commercial relationship. But um, you know, we also do a lot of other kinds of testing, whether that's um, needing a web application assessment or penetration test as part of a compliance initiative or some requirement, or perhaps just a, a best practice at the end of a development cycle, or looking at cloud or infrastructure security um, we've also worked with we work with organizations regularly to uh, to help implement things like uh, DDoS prevention and, and, uh, and uh, application firewalls. Um, and uh, we work with organizations on compliance efforts. If there's a need to have us like a SOC 2 or an ISO compliance, um, those are a common request that we see. Um, Salon, did I miss anything there? No, oh, that's usually how it goes. First, you do your application security, then you look at your infrastructure, and then you have to look at your governance and requirements for where you're located. Like if you're in Europe, you have GDPR in Canada. If you are in medical, then you have the PHI obligations you have. Perfect. Thank you very much for the answer there. I'm not seeing any other questions coming in at the moment, but uh, Eric and Sal, if you have any other final points that you would like to discuss, or where um, our attendees might be able to reach you, or what kind of contact, I know you had it at the end of your slide, but just to revisit that again real quick. Sure, I mean, you can obviously reach us at our website, it's parabellix.com, P-A-R-A-B-E-L-L-Y-X, um, and that, uh, it, I'll have an interesting aside for you, Parabellix is, comes from the Latin. Um, we have a phrase, uh, CV, CV Securitas Parabellum, which is an ancient uh, Latin phrase, which means if you want peace, prepare for war. Um, so uh, we, we, we took a little spin on it and, and our, uh, our slogan has been, if you, if you want security, uh, prepare for war. So, um, you know, Parabellum essentially means prepare for war, Parabellix. Fantastic, that's a fun little bit of trivia. <laughs> Company. That's cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for everyone who attended today. This uh, webinar will be available on YouTube uh, shortly after we finish, um, we finish processing the recording. I want to thank both Salem and Eric for taking the time today to introduce their booster pack, uh, as well as um, develop booster pack in general. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye.